Today I'm going to show you how to get a 35mm film look in Lightroom. Welcome back to another Lightroom editing tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about how to get a 35mm film look in Lightroom. So this is the image I have today. It's a really nice image. You can see the overall blue tone I added to get that film look on here. And I've also lowered the contrast and kind of got rid of some detail to get that retro vintage style look. Let's just look at a quick before so you can see it's a normal image. You can see there's a lot of detail in here, which I wanted to get rid of and doesn't have that vintage style tone to it. And so I was able to add that in this edit. I also have another vintage style preset that talks about how to get that portrait 400 look kind of like a warmer vintage style. So definitely go check that out. I'll link that down in the description below. And before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe for more Lightroom editing tutorials. And let me know down in the comments below what other presets or videos you would like to see. I went ahead and reset the image. Let's get started with a clean edit. I'm going to start by lowering the temperature, getting the image on the bluer side. So you can start getting that blue look that we're going for. I'm also going to increase the tint a little bit, kind of offsetting the green from the trees and the grass. I also want to lower the exposure just a little bit. From the other editing that we're going to do, it's going to brighten the image. So I want to decrease that. I also want to lower the contrast. A lot of vintage and film style images don't have that much contrast. So I want to decrease that. I'm also going to decrease the highlights so you can see some more details in there and I'm also going to increase the shadows. I also want to lift the whites and the blacks just a little bit as well so you can see some more detail. I also want to increase some texture that kind of adds just a little bit of grain to it but I also want to decrease the clarity and the dehaze which kind of adds that faded look to it which is what I'm going for. I also want to decrease the vibrance and then also increase the saturation. Let's just look at a quick before and after. You can see I was able to get that faded look and kind of get started with the coloring process. And now we're going to move on to the main part which is going to be in the tone curve. In here I'm going to be adding a more of a faded look and I'm also going to be coloring the image through the RGB curves as well. And so I'm going to start by lifting the black point a little bit on here. And then I'm going to take another point and bring that down just so we can add that little bit of contrast so the image isn't too faded. And then I'm going to take a point up here and then lift the highlights so we can see some more detail there. I'm also going to crush the whites just a little bit as well. So you can see that added some more contrast to the image so the image isn't too faded. But now we're going to move on to the RGB tone curves which are going to be coloring the image. And on here you don't have to do anything too crazy like make an S curve or anything. But what I'm going to do on this one is just going to lower the top over here and make it towards blue. And then I'm also going to make a point down here. Just kind of bring it up towards red in the shadows. And you can see even this just made like that subtle blue tone over here. And now I'm going to move on to the green curve. And with this I'm going to be doing something really similar. I'm going to be taking the right point right here, kind of moving it towards that magenta a little bit. And then I'm going to increase the shadows over here towards that green. And now I'm going to move on to the blue curve. This one I'm going to take this point right here and bring it towards the blue just a little bit. I'm also going to take the highlights and bring that over towards blue over here. And then kind of bring it back down towards that yellow in the shadows. There we go. So you can see from the tone curve alone I was able to add that overall blue tone to the image and also color the image in a way so it looks a bit retro and has that film look to it. So the tone curve is really powerful. You can do a lot of coloring and you can do a lot of different styles with the tone curve. So now I'm going to move on to the HSL. I just want to fine tune the colors a little bit, make some small adjustments to get the colors right where we want them. I'm going to start adjusting the skin tones a little bit. By adjusting the tone curve, it kind of made it into that yellowish color. There's like overall greenish tone to the skin tone. I'll make that towards more natural color. 
So I'm going to increase the reds to get it towards more of an orangish. And then we're going to be shifting the oranges to make it a little bit towards the red side. I also want to increase the saturation on the red because we added that orange over here. But then I'm going to decrease the orange saturation. All right. I also want to darken the reds just a little bit as well. And then brighten up the oranges. So this kind of fixed up the skin tone and kind of made it look a little better. Now I'm going to be adjusting the yellows, greens, aquas, and blues and get the overall image towards that blue look that we're going for. I'm going to decrease the yellows. And then I'm going to increase the greens to get like a deeper green. And then adjust the aquas towards like a blue. And then adjust the blues up a little. And then adjust the blues a little bit too. Now I'm going to adjust the saturation. I'm going to decrease the yellow saturation. And then I'm going to decrease the greens. Make a slight adjustment on the aqua and the blue as well. With the luminance, I also want to darken the yellows. Then I'm going to lower the greens. Make those a little bit darker. Then I want to increase the aquas, make those a little brighter. And then make the blues a little brighter too. There we go. Now I'm going to adjust the purple and magenta. Decrease the purples. And then decrease the magentas. I'm going to desaturate the purples just a little bit. But then I'm going to increase the saturation of the magentas. I'm also going to make the purple brighter and then make the magenta a little darker. As you can see through the HSL is able to fine tune the colors, make them look a lot better and towards the more vintage look. Now I'm going to move on to the split toning, which is going to help add that main like bluish tint to the image. I'm going to press Alt or Option to see the hue at 100, increase the highlights towards more like an orange. and then increase the saturation. And then with the shadows, press alter option and go towards like a blue. There we go, and then increase the saturation on that. And so you can see that added that bluish tone to the image. Now I'm gonna move on to the detail. I do wanna sharpen the image just a little bit but I don't want to like sharpen it too much. We're trying to stay away from like a lot of detail. I'm gonna decrease the noise just a little bit, but I don't want to do too much since we're going for that more grainy look. On here, I'm gonna add just a little bit of vignetting since like old film style images has that vignette around the corners. And then I'm also gonna add that grain as well to get that old look to it. Now you don't want to go crazy with the green because then you'll really start seeing it. You can see there's some color in the green as well. I'm going to keep it kind of subtle. Around 30, it should be good. You can see I added that subtle green to the image. Now I'm going to be adjusting the camera calibration, just kind of fine tune the colors a little bit. And see where I like the reds. I like the more on this side, so I'm going to decrease that. And then I'm also going to decrease the saturation. Now let's look at the hue. I like the more on this side, so I'm going to decrease the hue on here, then increase the saturation. Same with the blues. I like the more on this side. 
then I'm going to increase the saturation on here. So you can see I was able to add that subtle color to the image, kind of make the skin tones a bit brighter. And overall, this is the final edit. So let's just look at a quick before and after. You can see I was able to get that 35 millimeter film look I was going for and overall added that blue tone to the image. And this is a really nice edit to get that film look and that vintage 35mm style in Lightroom. Thank you so much for watching today's tutorial on how to get the 35mm film look in Lightroom. If you liked today's tutorial, don't forget to like this video and to subscribe for more Lightroom editing tutorials. And let me know down in the comments below what other presets or videos you would like to see. Thanks for watching.